Hey. What's up, guys? Uh, so, just, just before we get started, just by the level of your voices and applause, can you tell me how much you love your incredible Gordon College chaplain, Bob Whitted? Can we just hear it from Bob? Yeah. I don't know if you guys know, but Bob was also a Gordon student back in the day. Graduated from here, I think in 1978, if I have that correct. So that would mean that Bob's got to be at least 25 years old, something around there. And, and he's young, and he's hip, and he knows what's cool and what's maybe not so cool. Uh, but Bob, we love you. We appreciate you. And uh, you're incredible. I'm so glad to know that my, my, my youth ministry professor is now the chaplain because you did an awesome job then, and you're doing an even better job now. So we love you, Bob. Uh, but something about Bob is that he's also, because he's so young, I'm sure he probably knows, you know, the cool, young, hip phrases that you might know. Like, for example, if someone says, no cap, Bob's going to probably know that that doesn't mean you can't wear a hat, Luke, wearing a hat in chapel. Yeah, it doesn't mean that. It just means that I'm not lying to you. I'm serious. Y'all know that. Bob probably also knows that if I say something like, I'm hip, it doesn't mean that I'm cool anymore. That's what it used to mean like 20 years ago. But for some reason, now that means I agree with you. Bob would also probably know that there's a, this other new phrase that's come out recently that you would say, let's get this bread. Let's get this bread. Bob's like, I know what that means. Of course he knows what that means. And let's get this bread. You know, I'm Egyptian. So when you say let's get this bread, I think let's get some pita bread and let's put some real good Arab food on that. Maybe you think let's get some white bread. Good for you. <laughs> Stop for me. Whatever you want. But let's get this bread. I mean, Urban Dictionary is blocked here on campus, but if you're off campus and you look it up, you're going to find out what let's get this bread actually means. And today in our world, this phrase means I'm going to get up, I'm going to rise and grind, I'm going to get going, I'm going to start my business, I'm going to work hard, I'm going to go to the gym, I'm getting at it. I'm going to get this bread. And it's a phrase that we use to, to get us kind of excited and motivated because we know why, why do I want to get this bread? Why do I want to achieve? Why do I want to succeed? Why do I want to get these things? It's because those things are going to make me feel successful. They're going to make me feel like I'm doing something good. It might make me feel like I can be proud of myself. Maybe for some of you, you want to get this bread because you want to make your parents proud of you. You want to make them know for sure that, you know what, the hundreds of thousands of dollars that you've spent on me before I was 18 are going to be worth it, and, and the hundreds of thousands of dollars you're going to spend on me while I go to school, also worth it, especially at Gordon, hello, thank you, Gordon grads. Um, let's get this bread. And, and it's interesting because sometimes we strive to get this bread in this manner because maybe we want to feel loved. We want to feel satisfied in who we are. And so we grind and rise and grind and go hard at it. We say to ourselves morning after morning, let's get this bread. And the theme of chapel this year is love. And I want to ask you, before we get into this text, is what are you doing to feel loved? What are you doing to feel this eternal sense of satisfaction? Now, you've all heard from John chapter 6, the story about Jesus, how he fed the 5,000. He fed them with some fish and some bread. And you've heard the story, he, he multiplied all this food and he fed everybody and everybody was full. And then after that, they all go off. Jesus goes off. He, we have like these five-verse break where Jesus casually just goes on a walk on the water, and then he comes back. All right, Jesus, cool. 
And then the people who were just with Jesus, who had just eaten all this food that he had given them, come back to him. They go and find him. So we're going to pick up right there in John chapter 6, verse 25. Oh, perfect. You guys, oh, sorry. Thanks. Uh, verse 25. Let's, let's start here. They found him, this is the people who were just with Jesus, they found him on the other side of the lake and asked, Rabbi, when did you get here? Anybody here ever go to Costco and get the free samples? Yeah. You know how you go there and you, get, you go pick up the piece of food and you talk to the person behind the desk because you want them to know that I'm not just here for the food, I care about you too. So you should like, hey, how's it going? Sure. <laughs> I think this is what's going on here. <laughs> These people see Jesus, and they're like, hey, when did you get here? Jesus knows that they're here for something else. So let's keep reading. It says, Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. You want to be with me because I fed you. Not because you understood the miraculous signs. But don't be so concerned about perishable things like food. Spend your energy seeking the eternal life that the Son of Man can give you. For God the Father has given me this, the, the seal of his approval. Uh, if you're taking notes, you don't have to take notes. But if you are taking notes, first thing that we're talking about is Jesus, not genie. See, this crowd came back to Jesus because they wanted something from him. They came back to Jesus because once he fed them and they are once again hungry. And so they're literally looking around at each other and saying, hey, let's get this bread. Let's get this bread that Jesus gave us yesterday. So let's go. Let's go together. Let's make it over there and get this bread. And while Jesus can absolutely meet your needs, your physical needs, if we just see Jesus as somebody who just meets our physical needs, we are missing the big picture of why he's here. If Jesus were just some genie, he would be like everything else this world has to offer. Give us something that lasts a short period of time and fades away. And it leaves us wanting more. Now look at what Jesus says to these people as, he comes, as they come back for bread the next day. He said, I tell you the truth. You want to be with me because I fed you, not because you understood the miraculous signs. Are they missing the point? Now, uh, this past year, Rachel, my wonderful wife, and I bought or adopted, I don't even know what to say, a dog. Can we put up this picture of my fabulous wife and our cute little puppy? Maybe it's a little bit hard to see. But when we got Pepper, we wanted to train. Keyword here is wanted to train. <laughs> Tried, very difficult. But, uh, but my friend Sammy here is going to toss me something. He's going to toss me this ball. Hopefully I don't drop it. Thanks, man. We, uh, we read some books. We watched a lot of YouTube videos. And one of the things that we learned when we were trying to teach Pepper how to play fetch was that when you throw the ball to the dog, they go and they get it and then they bring it back. I brought the biggest ball we have so that you guys can see it up there. They bring it back. And before you throw it again, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to wait until they make eye contact with you. You're not just supposed to throw it and then they come back and you just throw it and they come back because why? Here's the, here's the key point here. It's because they want you to understand that as you're teaching this dog to play fetch, if they make eye contact with you, they're seeing you, not just the ball. They're building a relationship with you, not just with the ball. And this is important because as we look at this text, we see that these people who were coming to Jesus were looking at the ball. They were looking at the bread. And it's so much more important to look at who's holding the ball 
than the ball itself. And so we'd have to wait for Pepper. And sometimes she'd whine and cry and beg and try to, hey, come on, give me the ball, give me the ball, give me the ball. And we have to withhold this ball from her until she makes eye contact with us. Because it's more important for her to see us than it is for her to see this ball. Why? Because this ball is never going to love her back. It can, it can provide some temporary fun for a little bit, but this ball is not going to eternally satisfy her. She needs more than just the ball, and they, in this story, needed more than just the bread that Jesus gave them. I'm going to put this down. Actually, here you go, Sam. My soccer skills. Look at that. That's cool. Anyways, how easy is it for us to see Jesus as a genie? How easy is it for us to see the things that he can give us? See, sometimes the thing is, Jesus will actually give us things. See, sometimes for some of you high school students who are here visiting, we love you guys. Some of you college students who are here, you've been praying for certain things. And God, I, I really, I would love to have this thing. I think this thing will be awesome for me, whether it's this college or whether it's this degree or whether this opportunity or this job or this internship, whatever it might be. We're praying for certain things. And sometimes God actually provides those things for us. But if we go to Jesus seeing that he is the provider of these things rather than the thing that we need most in our lives. Once again, we are missing the key point. We're missing what Jesus has to offer. Because here's the thing. Once we get that bread, once we get that thing that we're after, what happens? If you're a somewhat of a go-getter like I was when I was in college and even today, you strive after something. You set a goal and you go after it with everything you've got. And then once you reach that goal, you're happy, you're excited, and then it, just a little bit later, things start to go back to, all right, I got to set a new goal. And you become this like goal junkie. You set one goal after another and you're running after these things that are constantly trying to give you this high of success or excitement or whatever it is, but you always go back. It always fades away. fulfills us for a little bit, but then those things fade away, even if Jesus was the one who provided those things for us. Now, here's, here's the thing, right? The problem is, if we see Jesus as a genie, if we see him as the one who just provides these things for us, even Jesus, the satisfaction that he can give will fade away. Because if we see him as just one who gives us things, those things are going to fade away, so Jesus is going to fade away. So we can't see Jesus as a genie for that very reason. We can't just go to him just for the bread that he gave us yesterday. There is so much more that he has to offer. So if that's even, even the bread that Jesus gives us will not satisfy, what will? What will satisfy? Let's go to verse 27. The bread of life. Thank you, guys. But don't be so concerned about perishable things like food, Jesus says. Spend your energy seeking the eternal life that the Son of Man can give you. For God the Father has given me the seal of his approval. Listen, I know Jesus knows how hard you guys are working. How hard you guys are working to, to succeed, to do well, to make people proud, to make yourself proud. He knows. But he also knows that those things are not going to eternally satisfy. Those things are not going to be what you need. And so what other option do we have? Jesus is going to tell us a few verses later in verse 35. Here's what he says. He says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This I am the bread of life is the first of seven I am statements that Jesus is going to make through this book of John. 
in every single one of these, it's more than just a saying. Jesus is identifying himself by saying, I am. Is, this is the same way that God identifies himself in the Old Testament. So Jesus is saying, hey, I am God, first and foremost. And second, I am what you need. Like, if you're going to say, let's get this bread every morning, the bread that you need is me. I am the bread that you need. And so what I think Jesus might want to try to do in our hearts and in my heart this morning is to take this phrase, let's get this bread, and reorient it in our lives to say, okay, instead of the bread that I'm chasing after, that I think is going to satisfy, that I think is going to make X, Y, Z proud, what I really need is the bread of life. First and foremost, before anything else, I need him. He is my bread of life. Some of us are chasing after things that are not going to satisfy. Whether that be school, whether that be work, whether that be relationships, whether that be whatever it is that you have or even that God has given you, those things, the bread that we might chase, the bread that maybe even Jesus gave us, those things will fade. But the thing that will never fade is the bread of life. As the crowd hears these words from Jesus, as they hear what he has to say to them, they ask him, well, Jesus, how can we, how can we have this? And Jesus says, whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Here's the thing. Unlike everything else in this world that you have to work hard for, that you have to chase after, that you have to stay up all night for, this is the thing that you can't work for. This is the thing that no matter how much you do, it's not about earning God's love. It's not about earning this relationship with Jesus. He says, whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty again. It's not something you can work for. My dog, I wish I could make her work for me. (laughs) I wish, I wish that our relationship was kind of based on how she does life, (laughs) but it's not. I love her regardless. I do. And it's not based on anything that she can't provide anything for me. She really can't. But I love her. And I care about her. And I want this relationship with her. Me and you, we can't provide anything for God. He created us. What could we possibly ever offer to him? But yet he wants to give us the bread of life. But yet he is willing to sacrifice his son Jesus so that you and I can have a relationship with him. C.S. Lewis, in uh, this book called Screwtape Letters, he writes uh, as, you know, senior devil and junior devil, and they're having this conversation, and, and he, says, he says this. He says, uh, this is the, the, the senior devil guy writing to his apprentice, Wormwood, and he says, what we want if men or women become Christians at all, is to keep them in the state of mind I call Christianity and. Christianity and. See, sometimes we get so caught up with the blessings and the things that God might give us, and and those things become equal to or maybe even a little bit higher than Jesus in our life. But even if they're not higher, maybe it's just, oh yeah, I love Jesus but I also love this, and I also love that, and I give Jesus this time, and then I give my other things my other time. And I love how C.S. Lewis puts this because it's, it's this concept, of if, we, if, if the devil can't make you reject Jesus, if the devil can't make you turn away from your faith, he's going to say, all right, that's, that's cool, here, here, here's something else that you can focus on. Here's another thing that you can put in your life that you can really, really, this, this is where you are going to find your satisfaction. This is where you're going to find your love. And so we try to incorporate other things as what is going to give us life, as the, the bread that we have in our life. 
But what's happening here is that if Jesus is telling us, I am the bread of life, those other things, sure, they're good things, but they can never be the bread that gives us life. There's only one who is the bread of life. There's only one who can give us the life, the love, the satisfaction, the eternity that we need. It's not the things that he gives us. It's the person. It's Jesus himself. So let's get this bread, guys. Let's get this bread, but not the kind of bread that we've, we're used to hearing about. Not the kind of bread that we're chasing after that will never satisfy. But let's get this bread that will give us eternal life. Let's get this bread that for you and me where maybe there's a hole in our heart where no matter what I do, no matter how many people I hang out with, no matter what I'm striving after, no matter how many parties I go to, it's just that hole in my heart is still there. Let's get the bread that fills that. Let's get the bread that will never let us down. As a community and as individuals, let us chase after Jesus. And I'm not telling you, hey, let's get this bread as in church. And I'm not even telling you chapel, which is good. I'm not telling you not to go. But Jesus doesn't say church is the bread of life. Jesus doesn't say chapel is the bread of life. He says, I am the bread of life. And so me and you, we have to have this personal relationship with Jesus because that is the bread of life. Of course, there's other things that can, that can support and, 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 and nourish that, but who is giving you life? What is giving you life? And if it's not Jesus, you're going to continue to live with a hole in your heart that can't be satisfied unless it's filled with Jesus. He is the bread of life for you and for me. Let's pray. God, we thank you for sending Jesus, your son. Thank you that he is the bread of life. Pray, Lord, that wherever we're trying to seek love, wherever we're trying to seek satisfaction, wherever we're trying to seek, fill in the blank, Lord, that we would know that you didn't just send your son Jesus to be a good example, just to show us how to live. But God, you sent your son Jesus so that we can have life and life to the full that starts and ends with Jesus. Help us to chase after you. Help us to chase after the bread that you are. And that would transform us and transform our communities. We love you. We pray all this in your name. Amen.